So, hello everyone. I am Rubaiya Rungman. I am a PhD student uh, of civil engineering at the University of British Columbia in Okanagan, Canada. Uh, today, I will be presenting uh, this uh, study titled An Experimental Study on Concrete Incorporating Wood Ash as Cement and High Negative Replacement. Um, so, I have arranged my presentation in this following uh, outline. So first introduction, then uh, I'll be presenting the material properties and we have done vigorous uh, material characterization on the wood ash that we used. And also I'll be presenting the mortar test results using wood ash and fly ash and bottom ash and also the concrete test results. Um, so uh, we all know, uh, we can see from the pie chart that uh, the concrete a huge emitter of uh, carbon dioxide and uh, around 8% uh, carbon dioxide emission is by concrete around the global emission and uh, the main culprit is cement production and uh, 1000 kg cement production is associated with uh, around 900 kg of carbon dioxide emission so that's a lot and to reduce the concrete's both environmental and economic impact as cement is very expensive so uh, supplementary cementitious material is used and uh, these are uh, uh, like the coal fly ash, uh, uh, slag, silica fume are popularly used and the fly ash is the most popularly used one. So it does not uh, only uh, reduce the environmental and economic impact, it also increases the durability of the concrete uh, and also some mechanical properties with the pozzolanic activity. Um, so, uh, 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 and uh, fly ash, the most popularly used ones uh, come from uh, coal industry, which is also a threat to the environment. And uh, the Canada government has already announced the complete phase out of the coal fired electricity uh, industries by 2020. And one of the uh, prov provinces of Western Canada, Alberta, has already decided to meet this goal by 2023. Uh, and in the US also in 2020 itself, uh, more than 13 coal power plants were uh, actually shut down. So, uh, uh, and it is happening all around the globe. And this uh, actually threatens the availability of coal fly ash in the near future. So, uh, one uh, potential substitute is uh, wood ash, uh, which is uh, actually uh, found in the uh, uh, lumber based construction industry and uh, the disposal is also an issue so um, so uh, uh, some uh, i have some missing uh, points here i don't know why it's not showing up so uh, some problems are like the seasonal variation it uh, because of the seasonal variation the properties change and also uh, like from the source that we obtain the wood ash and also the temperature that wood ash is burned. These are very important things uh, that actually affects the properties of the wood ash. So, um, and there are two types of wood ash. One is the wood fly ash, which is more fine textured and more chemically reactive. And also it's deposited in the boiler exhaust system. And uh, there is wood bottom ash, uh, which is accumulated at the uh, boiler, uh, base of the boiler. And it's more, uh, it's coarser and it's more sand-like. So in this study, the materials we used were uh, GU cement, that is general use cement. And we replaced uh, cement with wood fly ash because of its, uh, it being more finely textured and uh, at uh, several percentages. And also uh, we used natural sand and we uh, replaced sand with wood bottom ash. And uh, we used stone as coarse ability. So, uh, since it's a new material, so we did like comprehensive material characterization of the ash, we did the uh, particle size distribution, uh, also some physical properties, and we uh, actually uh, uh, took some microscopic images and compared the images with uh, regular class F fly ash and uh, GU cement, and also we did FDIR, XRD, XRF, and also uh, the trace ele element concentration. Uh, and also we did the strength activity index. So these are the physical properties uh, of the uh, wood ash that we used. And also, uh, uh, so you can see the natural moisture content 
is uh, 3.07%. Uh, we found it in the dry state, but actually uh, uh, it has a lot of absorption capacity. And uh, yeah, D50, its particle size uh, was uh, 51.9 micrometer, which is quite large compared to regular flash. And also its pH was uh, around 10 and 11, uh, which uh, is in the alkaline side. So we did the scanning electron microscopy and the ETX on it. So if you can see from the uh, picture on the left, uh, is the microscopic image of our blue dash, and it's at 200 times magnified. So uh, I have identified the uh, some spherical. We can see three types of particles there. Uh, the spherical ones are pointed up with one, one number one. Uh, so uh, you can see the size variation, like it's uh, from a couple of microns to we found like around 400 microns size of spherical particles in the microscopic image. And also there are some irregular or fluffy shaped particles there and a significant amount of biochars, which are the unburned biochars that I uh, marked with number 3.3. So, um, and uh, the right images are more magnified uh, versions of these. So the uh, image A is the magnified version of the spherical, uh, spherical particles that we obtained. And uh, there was uh, the C by SI ratio was 2.31. And uh, the image B is actually a magnified version of the unburned vultures that you can also see a part in the image C. So the grooves and the porous structure actually, uh, uh, actually is the proof uh, of its uh, high absorption capacity and also high carbon content as well as you can see from the EDX that we found a lot of carbon there, obviously because it's unburned carbon. And uh, the third type of particle, uh, which was like a, a little bit fluffy and irregular shape, that was also like uh, more calcium. Uh, and uh, the CA by SA ratio was 3.56. So uh, this is, uh, you can see the dimensions, dimensions of the various spherical particles here. Uh, so uh, uh, the smallest one in this image was 32 micron and the highest one uh, was 400 micrometer. Uh, so we compared our uh, our blue dash with regular class A fly ash, and uh, we even could not compare them at the same magnification as uh, wood ash. Uh, the, the one on the left is the class F fly ash, which is magnified 2,000 times, and our wood ash is magnified 200 times. So it's 10 times more magnified. But still, you can see that nearly all the particles in regularly used class F fly ash is spherical and uh, also uh, a lot, uh, dimension is a lot less. And uh, from EDX, you can see that it's more silica, uh, obviously. And um, our wood ash uh, is actually not homogeneous, so uh, the composition varies from point to point, but uh, there are significant unburned particles present there. And uh, the third one is uh, cement, and it's obviously more uh, calcium. And this is a magnified version of the class F fly ash, and you can see the one of the big, biggest uh, uh, sphere is uh, like seven micrometer here. So compared to our wood ash, it's really small. So uh, this happens because of the temperature that the wood ash is burned, or uh, fly ash is burned. Fly ash actually burned at uh, 1100 to 1700 degrees Celsius, whereas our wood ash specifically was burned at 850 degrees Celsius at the facility. So uh, at higher temperature, all the minerals get burned, uh, and at lower temperature, of course, the char particles remains. That's why we found all the char particles there. So uh, we also did the Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Uh, I'm not going to the detail of the procedure, but uh, we can uh, from this band uh, we uh, found the presence of water, although it was uh, uh, oven dried. But uh, uh, we found the presence of OH ion there, and also calcium carbonate and uh, SiOSI and LOSI bond. These are the XRD uh, images of both the wood. Uh, fly ash and the wood bottom ash and uh, quartz was uh, like the major element. Uh, so I'll be going into detail in, uh, 
on the XRF result where uh, you can see the uh, bar chemical composition and the uh, metal oxides there. So uh, according to ASTM C618, uh, there are three classes of uh, fly ash. So uh, 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 from the silica, alumina and iron oxide content, uh, it's actually 59% in total which uh, can be both class F and class C fly ash, but uh, from the calcium oxide content, we can uh, actually uh, uh, conclude that our uh, wood ash would uh, behave more like the class C fly ash, which uh, actually is greater than 18%. And uh, the sulfur uh, uh, trioxide was like around 0.04%, so it was way below the uh, minimum. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, this is the trace element concentration, like uh, the heavy metal concentration, and we did not find any significant trace element in our sample. Uh, according to the regulations of uh, the British Columbia regulation and also the US EPA and also the Food and uh, Agriculture Organization of UN, uh, so it was less than the threshold. And the strength activity index, as mentioned uh, in ASTMC 311, it should be 75%, where we got 83%. So it also shows the potential to be pozzolanic. Uh, I'm sure why. I'm not sure why the mixer is not showing here. Uh, so uh, I can see the result, show you the results, and you can uh, explain there. Uh, uh, so these are the results of the mortar uh, that we made using the uh, wood ash. Uh, so if, if I could show you the mix design, you could see the percentages that we used. We actually used uh, 15 and th 0, 15, 30 and 45 percent of wood ash, wood fly ash as cement, cement replacement and 15 and 30 percent of bottom ash as sand replacement. So we can see the gradual decrease of uh, uh, the strength, uh, obviously because of the presence of the weak biochar elements there. So uh, uh, the strength decrease, but still, uh, uh, still 30% of the replacement, uh, we could uh, uh, say that the results were comparable. Uh, but at 45%, the strength really decreased uh, like quite suddenly. And uh, that the same goes for the wood bottom mesh. So it was supposed to be like uh, at the end. Uh, yeah, you can also see the appearance of the uh, wood ash based uh, mortars. So the color was uh, the ash sample was very dark in uh, like black color. So uh, the mortar also uh, was like uh, color was darker with the increase of the uh, ash in it and. Uh, uh, I, I was supposed to show you the concrete result as well, but I'm not sure what happened. But uh, you can see this is the microscope uh, ACM of the uh, mortars. So uh, uh, gradual increase of the wood fly ash in our mortar. So we saw the gradual decrease in CSH uh, in the microscopy and also the increase of calcium hydroxide compared to the concrete, uh, control concrete. So I'm not, uh, yeah. So the uh, we can. So yeah, I'm not sure what happened. So I can just conclude uh, say the conclusion uh, without showing it in the slides. So uh, it's that. Uh, so we found the uh, similarity in composition with the class C fly ash and class C fly ash and class F fly ash difference is that class C is less pozzolanic than the class F one. So uh, we also saw that in our setting time test results as well that. Uh, the wood ash we used did not have that significant effect on the setting time of uh, cement paste. And also uh, up to 30% we got comparable result. And uh, uh, based on the chemical composition and all the other material characterization tests, uh, we could uh, conclude that pulverizing it uh, and or uh, burning it at higher temperature and and or with longer time might uh, give us better result uh, since it shows good potential.